Hey everybody, this is Dave Cooper, and we're in the UK in central London at Bryden Wood, and I am hanging out with Jamie Johnson, head of global systems. Jamie, thanks for joining us. Oh, that's good to see you again. It's good to see you again as well. Just met uh, in the US a few months ago, which yep. is great. Uh, Jamie, let's recap. Tell us a little bit about what your role is here at Bryden Wood. So I tend to work with our uh, major clients, both public and private sector. So I tend to sort of uh, get introduced to the clients, work out strategically what we can do to help them kind of shape the offer around, you know, whatever their sort of business needs or business drivers are, and then set up the kind of the, the, the projects uh, and get the, t get the team up and running. So I do that on uh, either big clients like um, some of our data center clients, for instance, or yeah. some of the public sector stuff we're doing. Uh, I've spent a lot of my time over the last 10 years working with the UK government, mm -hmm. particularly helping them kind of shape policy and strategy around um, transforming construction as well, which is, takes up quite a bit of my time at the moment. Technology is literally built into the culture here at Brydenwood. Talk us through how that came to be. Uh, so when we, when we first started, uh, we were always interested in manufacturing type benefits and how we could bring that into construction. So the thing we were kind of... Um, best known for early on was design for manufacturing assembly or industrialized construction prefabrication. Yeah. Uh, we found very quickly that to make that work, we had to, to be very, very integrated. Uh, and that started just using a lot of kind of software. So some of the you know, manufacturing type software. So we were very early adopters of digital and actually we found that those two things are completely linked. Right. So every time we sort of develop a new uh, way of building, typically it's driven by you know new digital tools. So you've spoken to Phil and seen some of those configurators right. and things, and those two uh, strands of work are completely linked as, as far as we're concerned. I think the industry th thinks there's a sort of digital thing happening and there's a industrialized construction thing. In our minds, it's the, it's the same, you know, the two strands of the same initiative. They go they go hand in hand, literally. And and with that, I mean. We saw a couple of things with Phil, but my guess is you guys are constantly looking at to the horizon for how this technology can be applied or new technology added to it. Yeah, we think it's uh, interesting. I think a lot of people are taking a normal design, procure, build process and adding technology onto it. Mm -hmm. We've sort of said, if you had this technology, what would you do with it? Because you wouldn't, you wouldn't reinvent the kind of normal way of designing and building things. So we've constantly been trying to say, if you had access to this technology, what would be the way you'd change your whole design process, delivery process? Uh, which means we're, we're constantly finding out new things. We're constantly learning things. Obviously, the technology is getting better and quicker. Right. And so every year we're sort of trying to you know, work out what's the next piece of um, capability that we need to, need to get. So right. it's sort of growing in all sorts of different directions from being uh, initially just designers. We now have data analysts. We've got coders. We've got robotics people. We've got VR, AR experts. We do right. discrete event simulation. It's sort of gr grown in all these different sort of capabilities, but it's always in service of trying to find a better value offer for, for clients. Sure. Well, I mean, data is used in pretty much every other industry. It only makes sense that we're using it in the construction space now. Yeah. Yeah, and we're seeing, I mean, uh, yeah, the, lots of clients have tons of data, but they don't necessarily know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so part of our job is always sort of taking data that clients have got, working out how to, you know, generate information insight and something right. off, off, off the back of it. So, um, yeah, clients are waking up to the fact now they have this sort of massive pool of data. They can't necessarily get their hands on it or do something useful with right. it. So a lot of the stuff that Phil's been doing uh, on highways, for instance, is bringing together all these right. different data sets and making them work to, to become sort of great in the sum of the parts. So all, the, all these folks that are out there that have all this data, Bryden Wood knows what to do with it is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I love it. I love it. So you're, you're an international company. Yep. You're growing. You're expanding into the United States, uh, the Boston area. Yep. Um, so opening an office is one thing. What about partners and the collaboration that you have? Yes, the reason we're opening the office is because uh, more and more of our work is coming from the US now. Uh, so lots of the big data center clients are interested in the stuff we're doing. Uh, we're working with a company called Bolt on some process facilities. Mm -hmm. We're working with uh, Chandos, who are a big Canadian uh, contractor. So we're seeing more and more interest coming from the US yeah. in the stuff we're doing. And it feels like that's a, a market that is going to move very quickly yeah. There, there seems to be, I mean, we've spoken about it before, sure. the attitudes to drawing on this innovation to, to transform construction seems to be happening you know, very quickly in the US. So it feels like it's yeah. a rich hunting ground for us to, to be in. It, it is a rich hunting ground and it is growing quickly. And I think as uh, 
the, the industry, the stakeholders in the industry that are looking to build products start understanding the value of the data that they have or the data that they could get yeah. to speed up their products, uh, projects, to speed up you know, uh, time to market, right? Yeah. Cost and predictability. I mean, these are all major factors in the, in the we have a, a labor shortage, right? We costs are uncertain and yeah. all this. So this all really plays right into what you work on. Day yeah, and I think out. that's definitely what was, I mean, the, 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 yeah, those problem statements the same all over the world, the productivity, yeah. the carbon, sustainability, yeah. labor shortage and things. Uh, what we think is quite interesting is in the UK, government is backing this very strongly. So government's put a lot of effort into the policy and strategy around transforming construction. What we've seen in the US is it, there's not the same federal drive, but there's these massive serial clients and these big manufacturers yeah. And so the clients are sort of pushing it from the top. The manufacturers are, are coming up the value chain. So we're starting to see these things link up right. and that's going to be, um, yeah, that's the thing that's going to, going to transform it. So it's coming much more from the supply side in the States, yes. whereas it's much more driven by the government over here. Currently, sure. So we're in town for Steel Horizons with Howick. Um, let's talk a little bit, you know, how is steel transforming the industry? What do you see the future? So all of the big steel manufacturers are trying to work out how to make steel with less carbon now. Mm -hmm. So I think in the future, uh, whether this is sort of five, ten years, I don't know, I think we'll see all the electric arc furnaces will be powered by hydrogen fuel cells or wow. some form of renewables. So I think we're about to see the carbon content collapse because it's one of the things that obviously is um, certainly it's a, it's a key focus of the industry here is this sustainability thing. So I think that's going to transform the way steel gets produced and that'll open it up to, to uh, yeah, a lot of these sort of new ways of working. So there seems to be a sort of race between steel and carbon to get the, um, or steel and concrete to get the carbon right. content down. So it's happening very quickly in concrete. I think we're about to see it kicking off in, in steel and as well. Steel now. as well. Well, we're gonna go check out some of your projects. One, uh, Tottenham Court, we're gonna walk over there shortly and, and take a look at that. Yep. What are your, what's your thoughts on that project before we get there? <clears throat> yes, yeah, so th this is the tunnel lining, uh, the architectural tunnel lining for the yeah. um, uh, Elizabeth Line cross rail. Yeah. It's the most digital to physical thing I think we've done in the office. Uh, so we were using SolidWorks, which is a um, right. piece of software that's more often used in manufacturing. But mm -hmm. once we had the kind of SolidWorks model, everything was then driven from that model. So all of the coding of the components, the uh, some of the moulds were 3D printed directly off the model. Some right. of the bigger components were CNC cut, again, mm -hmm. straight off the model. So you'll see when we get down there, the, the geometry is incredibly complex. Right. Uh, I'm not sure how you could have, you, you couldn't probably have built it without you know, having some of these digital tools. But the fact that the, the model was then linked straight into the manufacturing process, mm -hmm. and every component was kind of pre-kitted, pre-checked in the model, so we knew it would all fit. Uh, With yeah, it's, it's incredibly, yeah, yeah. it's the, probably the most sort of advanced digital workflow that we've used at that sort of scale. I, I love it. The Forge, we're also going to check out the Forge yep. while we're here. What can we expect? Uh, so that's the first commercial office that's using this platform kit of parts. So we developed a um, cross-sector kit of parts. Mm -hmm. So most of the Forge superstructure is actually based on uh, something we did for the ministry. So I think there's a really interesting story about we developed it in the public sector, private sector developer then picked it up and said, actually, I can use the same components, the same processes. So you'll see uh, just how closely integrated the superstructure, the MEP, for instance, are all sort of very, very um, closely coordinated. Uh, we got incredible bursts of productivity because of the pre-kitting of everything and the accuracy of the components. Mm -hmm. Once the superstructure was up, then... Uh, the facade came as a kit of parts. They were able to install facade panels in seven and a half minutes, which is lightning seven fast. Seven and a half minutes. <clears throat> and the MEP was all uh, pre-kitted and sort of delivered and offered up to the slab. Right. Uh, so the productivity in those two packages was incredibly good. So theoretically, you could have built that building in half the time. Right. Right. But right. logistics is the next big thing we need to get, get right. into now. Well, and we're going to bring that to everybody out there that's watching this as well. Jamie, thank you so much. Thanks Appreciate well. you taking yeah. some time out of your day. We're going to head down to Tottenham Court so we can show you that as well. I'm Dave Cooper. We are in central London at Bryden Woods. Digital to physical. This is where you want to come. Bye now.